John, John, are you able to hear it, Coach Lowry? No. Okay. Hey, Coach. <laughs> Coach. Huh. Coach Lowry, you there? Uh, okay. Your audio went out as soon as you started talking, unfortunately. Uh, it's very broken up. Why don't we do this? Let's do a quick test. Coach Yates, can you? You bet. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're fine. Coach, uh, Coach Payette, are you? Is your audio okay? Hear me? Yeah. Coach Logan? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I can hear you fine. Okay, thanks. Unfortunately, Coach Lowry was great in the half hour of prep time. I'm here. <laughs> Kirk? I, I muted Coach Lowry. We're going to, uh, Coach Lowry, I'm going to have you log out and log back in and see if we can correct that in the meantime. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll recycle him. In the meantime. You want me to text him that? Should I text him? He's not muted, Kirk. Well, I tried to mute him, but, you know, Coach Lowry is hard to get quiet on the sideline. That's probably the same problem I had. I, I, I'm sure he had a brilliant answer to the question, and hopefully <laughs> we'll find out what it was uh, down the road here. All right. Uh, Coach Yates, why don't, why don't I throw the same question to you? Uh, what's the number one thing that an official can do that will reassure you that they know what they're doing on the field? Um, well, first and foremost, how they present themselves during pregame. Um, you know, at this point, there's a lot of officials that we've had multiple times, and so that kind of helps when you have some familiarity. Um, but, but just uh, in my opinion, I think, I think just the way they carry themselves and if, um, you know, especially if, if you know from the beginning that they're, they're there for the game and to do the best job they can for, for the kids and the coaches and, um, and that they're not necessarily there, uh, you know, just for the, the small paycheck they get. And, um, and that, you know, it's, it's, it's really the, for the love of the game and that that's why you hope they're there also. Coach Logan, how about you? Well, I would echo, um, I would echo what Scott said um, in terms of why officials do the job. I mean, it, to me, it's very similar to why coaches coach. I mean, we're all there. I think to benefit the game of football and as coaches, you're there to try to, you know, impact these young guys in a positive way and teach them some football and win some games and so forth. But the bottom line for coaches and officials were, were the, 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 I think one of the first and foremost things we're there for the same reason. That's because we love the game of football. We're trying to grow the game of football. We're looking for more officials to work. We're, lo we're looking for more coaches, really tough to find coaches that um, can dedicate the amount of time necessary to build a, a winning program and do so for about six cents an hour. You find guys that are willing to commit the time but may not be good fits in terms of being around kids, and then you find guys that would be great fits to be around kids, and they can't commit the time. So it's a, it's a challenge to grow the game, I think, for, for all the groups on board here today, for officials and for coaches. Let's, let's go with the corollary. We'll stick with you for a minute, Coach Logan. What, what's something that if an official does, it causes you to immediately lose confidence in them? Um, I, I think if, if, guys, if guys refuse to communicate, um, I, I think there are, you know, you get used to working with veteran officials and you know pretty much what to expect from them. And you know you're going to get a fair shake. You know that they come into the game with um, – without a predisposition one way or the other. Um, you may have had, you know, over the course of time, for me, 27 years, you, you've probably had these guys two handfuls or more. You may have had one game where, you know, you got after them and they didn't like that and they got after you. But you can tell the veteran officials come in and whatever happened in the past is in the past. So for me, in terms of having confidence in an official, one, if I know that official, um, that's more likely to be the case. And two, if the official – we'll just communicate on, on a call. If I've got a question about a call, just come over and, and tell me, um, hey, here's, here's what I saw. And even if it's not what I saw, you at least, you at least have come, you, you've come over, addressed it quickly, gone on with the game. The officials that, I, that, 
you know, are frustrating, the most frustrating for me is that when you try to get their attention on a call, just tell me what you see, they, they completely ignore you. They just, they just absolutely will not engage in a conversation. And the longer they do that, the more frustrating, at least for me, things become. Okay, appreciate that. Um, Coach Payad, how about you? Um, what's something that if an official does that really causes you to lose confidence in them? I think what both coaches said, I mean, echo pretty much what they said. For me, it's how, how the ref carries or, you know, carries himself. So it's not necessarily what he says. Uh, it's maybe what he doesn't say. So, you know, pregame meetings, you know, before the game, I can tell right away if the coach is engaged in the game or if he's just there to be in a transaction. Um, so for me, like getting these refs to be, and there's a lot of good ones that are very personable, that, you know, make it feel like you are on the same field together and not against each other. Um, so for me, the biggest thing I get frustrated with is when right away they, they come in and they command that they're a boss and it's their field and that usually right there turns me off where I want them to be assertive. I get that that's, they're running the show over there, but we got to work together. Um, so I hate when I, I get frustrated when um, right away I can tell this is not going to be a game I can ask a question because um, then it starts, in my mind, if I get on him too early, too hard, he's just going to shut me down and, you know, penalize me later in the game. So for me, it's really that, just being personable, being engaged, and, and being on the same page as why we're there, and that's for the kids, and not just, you know, collecting a paycheck. We're going to we're gonna jump around a little bit. Um, you're, I'm curious, if, if you were an official, um, would you call more holding, less holding, or about the same as what you see called on the field today? Um, let's try Coach Payette. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a tricky question. Um, I'm an offensive guy, so, of course, <laughs> I'm going to say – uh, less holding, um, but I really think that goes with a lot of a lot of the game today. I think there's a lot more penalties where kids are almost afraid to go after a, a play 100% because they're afraid of you know the, if they get a penalty, especially getting help holding is 10 yards. So um, for me, I, I wish they'd call a little less. Um, what I teach my receivers, the defensive backs, is it's your job to get off the line. So if they hold you, that's your job to get off the line because you guys can't call holding every play, but you probably could if you had enough reps. So I think it's holding's a, an every down play. Um, and I would definitely like to see less of it. Okay. How about you, Coach Yates? I would say the same thing. <clears throat> you know, I think um, you could call it enough that you would really disrupt the flow of a game. I think oftentimes it's, it's um, called too much, and so the game ends up feeling choppy, and everybody feels like they're kind of fighting through the game instead of letting the game kind of dictate the, the flow. Um, so I, I would, you know, I, I'm always for games that have a little bit less of the yellow hankies out on the field. Okay. Coach Lowry, are you back with us? I hope so. Okay, that's much better. So I, I want to hear your answer to the original question, but first, why don't you address this one? If you were an official, would you call more holding, less holding, or about the same as what you see called on the field? You know, I replied to Kurt last night. I think the, the holding calls when it impacts the play, I think it has to be called. And occasionally in every play, you have to call it every play because it's – it's the way it is to impact the game so much if, if you let a kid get away with it. And sometimes there's a you have a superior defensive player and the only way the kid can do it, but you're penalizing a really good player if you allow the kid to, to tackle him every play. So there's some pretty blatant ones. Um, you know, if, the, if, they're, if their hands are in where they're supposed to be, then that's not holding him. But when he gets outside and it's more of a tackle, those are hard to coach your, your kids on how to defeat that. Coach Logan, agree or disagree? Um, I, I think I, I would agree with with Andy and Brad both uh, on both of their points. I think that um, by and large, I think you'd you'd like to see less holding. I mean, one of the nice things as you, if you're fortunate enough to ever um, get to a state championship game, you know you're pretty familiar, normally speaking, with the crew, um, and by and large, they're going to let those two teams play. Um, which I, I think is, is, is better for the kids. It's, it's easier to coach. I think it's better for the fans. And I agree, again, with Andy. I think if it's a blatant hold, then you, know, you got to call it, if it's at the, especially at the, uh, at the point of attack. It, it's a really – listen, I, I would not want to be an official. I, I, think that, I think that is a, not only a tough job, but to call holding or not call holding, if you're a referee or you're an umpire and your task is to look you know, in the box – uh, and, and try to determine where the ball goes and then the point of attack and where are the hands and how much did he grab him. I mean, that's a, that's a tough, tough thing, and I think it's so subjective. So, again, to answer the question, by and large, I would like to see less called unless it's at the point of attack. 
Okay. And Coach Lowry, I want to give you an opportunity. So what's the one thing that an official can do that will reassure you that they uh, know what they're doing? I think it's just the communication starting before the game and introductions to um, after the penalty call, the more the, the communicate with us about hey, what number and what the situation is. Uh-oh. again. <laughs> Uh, no, I think the communication piece is here. Yeah. Kirk, can we get him to phone in? He, he might just hate the question. But yeah, I, I, some, for some reason, somebody doesn't want us to know what he has to say about this. So um, uh, why, why don't you work on that technical issue? Coach Lowry, I heard communicate, and we always get the call right. That's what I heard you say. So I'll t we'll take that as your answer, okay? All right, we'll get him back online and uh, try again. Uh, so the last time, uh, let's start uh, with you, Coach Payat. The last time that you had a meltdown on the sideline, what caused it? You know, it was, uh, we had a player um, who earlier in the game, like, returned a, like a pick six or something, got in the end zone and did that. So he got a personal foul for that, um, not a warning, just straight personal foul. And then later in the game, um, he did it. He hit someone, I think the quarterback, and drove him out of bounds. And he got another uh, – another uh, foul or so he was kicked out of the game so not only did he lose the game and we were playing a team that was not really relevant that week we had our our, our tribal the next week in rv so we lost one of our best linebackers so to me that really set me off one because they didn't give a kid the chance to at least have a warning before they just basically you know foul him on that so for me it was that was what got me really set off and um i probably could have handled it a lot better um, because we got about 45 yards of penalties on that play. So that didn't really help us, but that, that definitely was something that got me upset. So you created a learning opportunity for officials because if there's contact uh, uh, by a player, that should not be an unsportsmanlike conduct. So if it's a personal foul with unnecessary roughness or a late hit out of bounds or piling on or, or something like that, uh, then that would not be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And it takes two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties to get ejected or something that's very flagrant or blatant. So I, I obviously I don't know the specific situation, but at least from what you described, um, uh, one of those penalties involving contact uh, would be a personal foul rather than an unsportsmanlike conduct. But I'll throw the same question to uh, uh, Coach Logan. Last time you had a meltdown, what, what caused it or contributed to it? Um. Well, there, <laughs> there's different degrees of meltdowns, I guess. Um, I, I, in the state championship game, I, I certainly objected to uh, an offensive pass interference call that uh, took place in the third quarter. The call was on us. Um, now, after, after I went back and looked at the call, I still thought it was a bad call. I didn't think it was offensive pass interference, but I could see – from the back judge's perspective as to what he saw, because there was, there was definitely hand fighting with both players. And my guy's trying to, trying to work his way back through the body of a player. But again, you know, subjective calls. I mean, those things can go, they can go either way. I, I would rather deal with that. And I, there was a good crew, uh, there was a good crew working that day and they came over to explain the call and still didn't like the call. But they communicated with me about what, why the call was made. Um, but, but normally speaking, listen, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't do you. I've never had a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty called on me in 27 years. That doesn't mean I haven't had my fair share of uh, differing opinions with officials and I've let them know. But I think it, it, from a head coach's perspective, if you do this the right way, it, you make your point, and then you know what? You got to let it go. Uh, what I get on my assistants, and Brad play, played for me, so he, he may know this as a player. You know what? Make your point and then keep your mouth shut. What, what drives me a little crazy from a coach's perspective is you want to make the point and then you harp on the point and you just don't know when to stop. And all that does is it irritates. And if I was an official, it would irritate me too. But it irritates the officials and to the point that I think you're not going to be very likely to get any calls for, for, for the time being. At least, you know, that's – I'm human. That's what I think I might think of if I was an official. Like, you know what? Shut – Shut the hell up. You've made your point. Stop it. And that good officials, I think, will say that. You know what? You've made the point. Stop. And then it's up to the coach to stop. you got to set the example from the sideline. Uh, you, Coach Yates, what's the last time you had a 
meltdown on the sideline. A few years ago in a, a state championship game, we're playing La Junta and, um, <clears throat> and we, we got a crew that um, was kind of a split crew in that they hadn't all worked together. There was a couple of them that had worked together and then there was three of them that hadn't. And um, <clears throat> so we had a call that ended up being a no call that um, was again, it was a pass interference and the, um, the head linesman was on our side and the back judge and it was a corner route and um, these two guys had never worked together and it became blatantly obvious when there was a, a, a very blatant um, foul and they both looked at each other and hesitated and then neither one of them called it because it was like they didn't want to step on each other's foot. So, <clears throat> so it, was, it was one of those things that there was no question there was a, a, a penalty that should have been called, but it was uh, a lack of communication or, or really cohesiveness between the, the two officials <clears throat> in a spot that was really kind of between them. Um, so both of their eyes were in that direction. And, and it was, it was kind of like, well, I don't want to make that call because I don't want to step on his feet. But the other guy was thinking the same thing. So nobody made the call. So um, you're, you're sure this was a game you had and not a New Orleans Saints playoff game from a couple of years ago you're talking about, It's right? funny how you, you say that, and it was uh, kind of deja vu when I watched that game, that New Orleans Saints game. So um, you know, did, I, I absolutely was, uh, you know, it was a big part of the game, a big time of the game, and uh, it, it, you know, certainly might have had an outcome in the difference or a difference in the outcome. Yeah. Coach Lowry, you're back with us. hope so. hope so. Yeah. Sorry, you keep screwing up the meeting. I'm, I'm bound and determined to have you ask you that uh, answer that first question where we can hear it. What's the number one thing an official can do that will reassure you they know what they're 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 doing? Well, kind of ironic. It's about communication, right? Because my uh, I keep getting uh, uh, kicked off of this, but no, it just the more that we communicate, uh, the more that the side uh, the sideline um, official communicates and helps us out, and at least listens uh, and just opens up that communication. I think that helps out. At least it makes us feel like we're being heard. Um, and it, I think that goes a long way. Do you know who the officials are going to be for your games before the game? I do. I, we all get that. Um, you know, sent to us probably midweek. So I look at it. I just, uh, you know, I think one of the questions was if we ever, you know, coach to um, with the officials knowing who the official is or not. And I've never, I, I look at it, but I, I, it's never impacted any type of game planning or, or any of that ever. So it's been a long time since I've probably 20 years ago, maybe had an official that is just like we had several times that one year and it was probably several times too many. So I think, but it's been a long time since I requested not to have an official. How about you, Coach Fiat? Do you do anything with that information in terms of your game planning or what you tell kids? No, I think, you know, I try to go into it with the mindset if I had a bad experience, you know, previous with them, I don't want to go into that already having, um, that notion of that I'm going to have a bad experience. So I try to go in kind of not knowing who it is and make the best of who we get. And hopefully, you know, with them too, they, if we had an issue before, hopefully they can get over it quickly too and we start over. So for me, I, I, I don't look at it. Okay. Coach Yates, Coach Logan, you want to add anything on that question? Um, I, I'll say this. I, I, I get the same info that Andy gets. I mean, after a game, uh, I will just write myself notes on the various officials that work the game and I've kept all those cards over the years. And so when I, when I find out what officials are working the game, um, if, if I go back and look and say, okay, this guy, uh, he's called holding more than, you know, other officials, or this guy uh, will not let you from a defensive back standpoint, any contact down low with your hands, he's going to call that. And without, without saying specifically about an official, I will tell players, Hey fellas, this week now, you, you know, when we're in practice, and, and your hands are outside the, the framework of the body, rest assured you're going to get called for that. We're going to get called on that Friday night. So I don't share the officials' names, nor do I share my opinion with my players on the officials, but I, I do tell them based on if there's something that strikes me about a certain official coming up on Friday. Okay. Um, Coach Yates, do you, do you think the pregame conferences you have with the um, officials are too long, too short, or about the right length of time and information? I don't, I don't have any trouble with it. So I, I would say from my perspective, I think they're fine. 
Does it help you um, or do you appreciate uh, meeting the sideline official who's going to be on your sideline to start establishing that rapport and communication? Even though that doesn't generally happen in the pregame meeting, I will make a point to go uh, introduce myself to the sideline guy who's on our side. And I'll, I'll ask all of you this, uh, this question, but uh, would it make a difference to you at all? Do you think it would build rapport if all the officials at some point during the pregame came over and introduced themselves to you? Or do you, do you have other things going on at that time and that would just kind of be an interference? Coach Yates? Well, I, I don't know that it's necessary. I think that the people that you're going to be talking with the most and communicating with are the ones that it'd be nice to make sure that you have that kind of um, communication before the game. But I don't necessarily need to know what, you know, the guy on the other side is, and he probably doesn't care to know me either. So, um, Coach Lowry, any thoughts on that? No, I think, uh, I think just including the, the official that's on our sideline in that meeting, um, and then I think that would be enough that we don't need to, we don't need to introduce all five of them now. Okay. Coach Payette, Coach Logan, any, anything you want to add? Um, I, 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 I think the, the pregame meeting is fine with the, with the people involved. I always like to know who's on the other sideline, uh, to know if, if I've had him before. Is he uh, – what kind of official is he? Is he a strong official? Is he a guy that is going to be persuaded by the other sideline? Uh, you know, that sort of thing. I just like to know who it is. But in terms of the pregame meeting, I think what we have now is good. So uh, earlier, Coach Logan brought up uh, the assistant coaches. So I have a question for you guys in respect to that. Um, what's the best way for your what, wing official, the, the sideline official working on your sideline, to let you know that one of the assistant coaches is, is being too aggressive or too loud? And my other question is, do you think that the officials should be able to talk to the assistant coaches? In other words, our mechanics and rule books really instruct us to talk to the head coach so that there's no miscommunication. And later on, the you know, an assist, some, you're not saying something to us. And I say, well, we told the assistant coach that. Because then you'd be like, well, why didn't you tell me I'm the head coach? So we try to keep our communications with the head coach. So my question is kind of two-part. Do you, do you believe that there should be more communication with assistant coaches and officials? And what do you think the officials should do if the assistant coach is getting uh, what they consider to be out of control? And, and I'll start with you, Coach Lowry. Um, I, I enjoy that. Uh, I like this question. Um, I was trying to explain to Kurt. I'm not sure. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, the way that technology is now, we have the sideline systems that uh, they get the feed from either the end zone or next year it's going to be a drone. And so like I call offense. So when our offense is off the field and um, I go back with our offense and our, we're looking at the video to see what's going on. I'm meeting with our offense. So my assistant coaches are running, basically running the game, controlling the game at that point, that the defense. So when I finish offensively, I come back up to the sidelines and, and, you know, and stick my nose and everything. But, um, I'm going to need the, the officials to be able to communicate with at least, and maybe it's just designating one assistant coach, but they have to be able to call a timeout if we have to have a timeout or if there's an issue on the field. And then they usually always just yell back at me. But I think the way that the sideline system and technology, you almost have to be able to communicate with, with an assistant coach. And that being said, if, if when I back up on the sidelines and, a, and a, the, the, an official says that, hey, that coach is getting carried away, I'll take care of my assistant coach um, as far as that goes and, and let them know. And, and we have coaches meetings about that, that, you know, I'm really, the, I'm the only one that will ever speak to an official about any type of uh, situations. So um, I think that it has to be worked with on both, but I'm not sure what Dave and, and Brad and Scott do as far as the sidelines the systems, if you go back with your offense at all, or are you guys strictly on the, on the sidelines? Because I think that that plays in, in the role that you're asking right now with, with yeah. dealing with assistant coaches. What's Coach Logan? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I like Andy. I mean, I call the offense. Um, the only difference is when when we go on defense, uh, I, the offensive line coach will take the offense back with the running backs, coach, receivers, and I flip immediately to defense because I mean that's just always how I've done it. Um, and I think I think as far as officials talking to assistant coaches, I, I think it's okay if if if, uh, if if you want to talk to the assistant coach. I think it's the head coach's responsibility to make sure he as a hold of his assistance. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's like we were talking about before we started 
this, uh, you spend a lot of time with these kids, a lot of hours and work, and then you see it come to fruition on Friday night and the emotions are high. And so I think that's where the head coach can come in and um, just say, listen, don't just stop, stop talking to the official. I put a couple guys in, and I love my guys, but I put a couple guys upstairs because you know what? They just couldn't quite understand that the, you got to leave these officials alone. So the only one that calls timeout is me. Uh, that way we don't have, I, I, I did not do that the first couple of years. Actually, Brad was playing for me and I had a coach call a timeout at a time that we, uh, we just could not afford to call that timeout. And after that, as a young coach, I learned, you know what, if I screw this thing up, then it's going to be the guy in the mirror that sees that. So I call the timeouts, but I, again, to answer your question, I think it's okay for officials on the, on our sideline to say, Hey, somebody says, Hey, why is that? You know, whatever, you know, coach, he had his arm around his waist as he's running down the field. You, and you can't, in other words, again, communication, I think is always better than not. Okay. Coach Yates, any, any thoughts to add? Well, I'm, I'm similar in that I, <clears throat> I'll be on the sideline the whole time. So I'll be calling the timeouts and um, I like to keep my assistants um, kind of under my thumb a little bit when it comes to negative communication with the officials. I think uh, what Coach Logan said about, you know, being able to have a conversation and ask a question, I think that's absolutely appropriate. But, um, boy, it's going to tick me off if, if one of my assistant coaches ends up costing us uh, some yardage because of a penalty or something like that. So if one of my coaches is out of line and I may not see it, then I would certainly hope that um, one of the officials would come say, hey, Coach Yates, your assistant over here, he's getting close. Um, okay. So, Because I've got, I've got a better chance of bringing that person in than, than the official does. Coach Payette, anything to add? No, I think just like everyone said, I think if there's a way to allow the assistants to be able to talk to the refs, I think it would be uh, an advantage. I'm much like the other coaches. I, I call the plays, and then I'm on, you know, on defense the next time up top watching the D. So for me, being able to have my offensive coordinator or lineman, D-line coach, whatever, be able to have because they see the game too differently based off where they on the field. So I, I would I would like I would encourage if we could have that ever be a rule change where the my assistants could um, speak to the refs just for that point right there, just based off where they are on the field where maybe I am. So, um, Coach hey, John, John, before yeah. you go to your next question, I'm going to call a timeout here. Um, I, I want to share with you, coaches. The uh, the chat questions are awesome, and there's no way I can get to all of them, but there are a couple that I think might help resonate john i'm gonna i'm gonna give these to you can you jot them down just so i don't uh take yeah, the one of them was uh, a really good question um would it be better to have our pregame like in the locker room i know back in the day there were some areas around the state that would do a pregame in the locker room and not take time on the field uh the next question was uh also a pregame issue if the coaches have anything for us that what, what would be the the most useful part or what is the most useful part of the pregame so that we don't miss that opportunity if, if a crew is doing something uh, that we can take advantage of one crew's doing it another crew isn't and uh, I think an interesting uh, comment that came through that we have considered at one time I don't know that we can effectively do it but does the, do the coaches think that switching wings from one sideline to the other at halftime uh, would they see that as a as a good thing or recognize the value there and I, like I said, there was a bunch more questions, and I we're not going to get to all of them. And by the way, I saw Mike Kelly mentioned that we just passed that uh, eight o'clock heroes howl. So uh, I was muted, so you guys didn't hear me howl. I could see it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I saw the switching wings kept question come apart, uh, come up. That would be a, a mechanics issue. Um, I don't know. How do, how do you guys feel about that? If the wings switched uh, at halftime, do you think that'd be a positive, a negative, or no opinion, Coach for Payette? Yeah, I don't really have an opinion on that one. Coach Yates? I really don't either. I've never Coach, thought of it. So. Coach Lowry? No, it's a good, great question. I pass her either way. Okay. Coach Logan? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it'd be a positive, uh, only because we're, we're, it just gives you a half of football to, for the official to experience that head coach and that team that you might not get. Uh, otherwise, so I'd say I don't know about the mechanics in terms of it would if it would change, you know, what they're actually looking at on a given play. But just from my perspective, I, th I think it would I think it would benefit both the I mean I think it would benefit officials and coaches to be able to interact with guys that they may not ever get a chance to for the rest of the year. How do you feel about pregame in the locker room? And one of the issues around this is uh, you know teams are going into the locker room much more before games and and sometimes 
pretty quickly after we come out, uh, uh, they spend a lot of uh, their time uh, in the locker room. Uh, what would you think of doing the pregame meeting between the coaches and the officials in the locker room? I will start with you, Coach Logan. You mean after the warm-up is done and after we go back in the locker room? Well, it, it would either have to be then. I mean, it's got to be where you're at, obviously. So it, 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 could be, it, would, it could be done before you go out on the field, before the warm-up begins. That would require the officials to uh, seek you out, you know, earlier, obviously, probably a good 45 minutes to an hour before game time. Yeah, we're, I, I would say that would be uh, maybe a challenge for the officials because we're out, we're on the field 55 minutes before the kick. So if you did it before, I mean, not a hill to die on either way for me. I'm fine doing it on the field during warm-ups. I think the earlier in the warm-up period, the better for me. But again, not a, not a hill to die on. Okay, so if we come out, as soon as we come out, if we come to meet with you, that's best for you rather than if we do other stuff and then come find you. Sure. sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Coach Yates, any any? I agree with there? that. I okay. agree with that. We're out, we're out on the field early enough and officials get there. Let's, let's go get it done. Coach Payette? Yeah, I prefer earlier too. I think that would help. Coach Lowry, I think it's been fine where it is. I I just would think uh, putting it in the locker room would that's an hour hour before the game. That's demanding more on your guys as officials. But uh, no, it's working well how it is now. Have you ever uh, stick with you, Coach Lowry? Have you ever hesitated to tell the officials a trick play or a trick formation or unusual player formation that you might run for some reason? No, no, if I. I try to tell them that we're running right and we're running left and just hold on to the whistle until you know where the ball is. That's about as tricky as we get. So, no, I've never, I never had any issues. And, How about you, Coach Hates? You know, if, we, if we're going to do something that's a little bit different, if we're doing a shift or, or something, oftentimes maybe that's a, in our special teams, then I, I would let them know ahead of time just because um, when I don't, often they don't recognize the formation that we shift to. Um, and so we've been penalized when, when we confuse the officials. So I, I'd rather they know that it's coming so that they're not surprised. Coach Payette, have you ever hesitated to tell the officials pregame about an unusual player formation you might run? No, I'm pretty um, upfront with them. I try to give them as much, you know, inside of what I'm running. I mean, we're pretty simple. We're a spread team, but we, we do do some shovel passes at the end in the goal line area a lot. So I try to at least let them know, hey, if, you know, if it happens so quick, it's not a fumble, um, you know, because it's a bang, bang play usually. Um, so that's usually, but if I have a reverse, double reverse, something like that, which we run here and there, I definitely try to um, share that with officials. I have a follow-up question for you. We used to, uh, some, some officials used to, you know, try to find out from the head coach if, if there was going to be, for example, an onside kick, you know, let me know. And then they would signal to the rest of the crew somehow, and the crew could be in position for the onside kick. And I'm curious if you think that if you'd rather have the officials know that there's an onside kick coming and signal to each other and get in position with the risk that that may let the other team know that something's up, or you'd prefer the officials either know and don't do anything or don't know at all. I mean, as long as, you know, they don't have a signal that, you know, that everyone knows what it is. If the other opposing coach sees it and they know shoots it's onside, that'd be my only uh, fear. Other than that, I'm okay not telling them either. I think the play, if it's successful, it's going to be successful. How about you, Coach Logan? On the onside kick? Yeah, first. Yeah, I, 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 would, uh, I would tell the officials before the game that, uh, you know, I think there's a pretty good chance that we may do this. And I would tell them where we will do it if we do it. And then I, I would alert uh, at least the referee. Um, it's the same thing as you, you go, like, very hurry up, like five or six plays in a row where we will not huddle. And as soon as you spot the ball, we're going to snap it. I, I would alert them after uh, a score that, hey, this next series, we're, we're going to get into that, that tempo. So I, I would tell them. Um, so, uh, Coach Yates, let's start with you on this question. Um, some officials do hesitate to respond to a coach's comments sometimes if they think the coach is angry or just blowing off stream. Do you think it makes the situation worse if the official has a deaf ear for a while? Uh, and it escalates things, or or can it de-escalate things to basically ignore the coach? I I don't think ignoring the coach helps. I think um, I, th I think if the coach is asking a question, he's doing it in a reasonable manner that that they ought to at least acknowledge it and say, you know, I'm not sure. I'll go find out, or um, I didn't see it that way. Whatever the case is, I think just a, a comment letting you know because I think if they don't, 
the coach might think that they didn't hear you. So then the coach gets louder. The next thing you know, the coach is yelling. <laughs> and then the coach finally realizes, well, that guy's just not going to respond. So I think that escalates frustration if an official doesn't at least acknowledge. And they can even turn around and say, you know, Coach Yates, you're full of it. <laughs> you, but, but at least acknowledge, acknowledge that I'm there and that I'm at least asking you a question. So, Coach, I appreciate that. Coach Lowry, Lowry, any thoughts on that? No, I'm reading the chats on there, and I think it comes back down to that communication. So ignoring us probably gets us more frustrated than it is just to acknowledge or to say just respond either way. But, yeah, I think ignoring makes it, makes it worse. Okay. Coach Payad or Coach Logan, you want to add anything to that? Um, are there any plays that you think are particularly challenging for five official crews in either types of plays or, or plays or formations that you've seen or you've run in the recent times as the game has evolved that you see either uh, you know, either from, I know you're not familiar with all of our mechanics, but that with just five officials, it seems to put a particular stress on things or, or cause uh, either people to be out of position or, or what you consider to be bad calls. And, and I'll start with you, Coach Payette. Yeah, I mean, I, you run, you know, a pretty simple offense, so I haven't seen, you know, any plays we run that would be challenging. The only thing I'd say maybe when you get down in that red zone, you know, things happen so fast. And although the field shrinks, it's still very hard to see a lot of things in the interior line or, you know, if there's pick plays coming across. So I think that would be an area where if there was an extra ref, um, you'd be able to see some of those plays that get missed. Coach Yates? I guess I'm going to ask you the question. Do you, do you guys feel that you um, <clears throat> need another official? Well, you know, there's a lot of debate about that. Um, I, I think Coach uh, by at, mentioned earlier, you know, the more officials you have, maybe the more risk you're going to have more flags. Um, and I don't know if you had seven officials and you had two deep wing officials just watching the widest receiver and, and they're, you know, with the defensive back, would it, it have fewer people, uh, everybody would be watching fewer people downfield. So there's debate about that, but obviously there's cost involved in that. And with officiating numbers, what they are, not just in Denver, but nationwide, it, it puts, would put a lot of stress on the system. So I'm not even sure it's possible. Um, uh, are there any plays that, uh, Coach Lowry, uh, any plays that you see that you run or that you see other teams run that you think are particularly challenging for five officials? Well, I just saw some of your, your stats come across. Um, RPOs, uh, a lot of times linemen downfield. Uh, I think it gets to be pretty tricky as far as that with the play action and, you know, with RPOs possibly with it. Like Brad said, uh, pick plays, especially from the slot receiver. Um, you know, the, if it's from the outside guy, he's right there. But that, that inside slot guy setting picks um, is a pretty tough one that you very rarely see get called. So those are the two biggest ones. You know, offensively wise, it's the defensive lineman cutting our offensive lineman from outside the tackle, which is, uh, which is only what's outside the tackle box. But um, I've been talking to Kurt about that for, for years. It just is uh, really dangerous on our linemen um, when they're blocking down and a, a defender cuts them from the outside in. It's just uh, it's a, a blown knee waiting to happen. So that's that's the one that I get real frustrated with. Just it's a it's a safety issue for our kids. Coach Logan, any thoughts on that question? No, I, I agree with uh, with Brad and Andy. I think uh, I think you know the the pick plays, rub plays, whatever. They're 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 tough to call. I mean, they're tough to call at the NFL level. Um, the, the, so they're really hard to call at the high school level. I think sometimes when offenses. You know, some offenses will spread out um, and there's more room to see. You know, some will constrict and it's tougher to see what goes on uh, in the mix. But by and large, no, I, I can't think of I can't think of anything. Okay. Um, I think you four coaches now and I think you guys are pretty good about submitting huddle film for your games uh, when you get the request from our officiating association. But just in case, you know, we, we use that. Uh, we have to send a request. Obviously, the school has to send it back. Uh, respond to it by sending us the film. We don't ever share those with anybody. We use them, uh, you know, with the crews and association wide to look at plays and things that were done well and things that could be improved upon and uh, to evaluate uh, officials as well. So we, we get a lot of use out of it and it's been a big tool for us over the years. My question for you is, has there uh, ever been a time when you are hesitant to submit a game film or do you have any concerns about submitting game film after a game? And I'll start with you, Coach Payette. 
No, I think it's a pretty seamless process. Uh, you know, we get the request usually right after we get the film. So I don't think it's, uh, it's been an issue. I think you know, it's been pretty seamless. How about you, Coach Yates? I think it's great. I have no problem sending it in as soon as I get the request. Okay. Coach Lowry? No, I'm okay sending man. My question, I guess, to you guys is sometimes when we watch, uh, we review our film, sometimes it's, it's easy for us to kind of cut or circle certain plays. Is that helpful for you guys, or is that like, uh, you got, I mean, is it one of those things that you guys take personal, like, uh, what do you guys, you know, you're only showing, you know, these 10 really bad plays or whatever, but um, they're kind of highlighted, you know, where you could circle them on huddle. Um, yeah. send them in like, is that useful, or is that more like, don't do that? Uh, it, that's a, I appreciate the question. Uh, some people do, some people don't. Um, what would you think of if we had a form that you could fill out on the association website and ask for uh, an independent review of, say, up to three plays for um, uh, from a game? Would that be a good thing? Um, not sure. Not sure. Yeah. I don't know. If, if we send huddle in to you already, I don't know if it helps just, just to say, hey, can you watch these particular plays, these ten plays or whatever, or three plays or two plays or whatever, if we're already sending the huddle in. Is that beneficial for you guys or not, um, if you're going to get that film anyway? Kirk, you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, and, and, I, and I know it's a tough balance. Um, you as coaches are thinking, well, maybe if I, if I be overly critical, there might be some retaliation at some point, and we certainly wouldn't want that ever to happen, and I, I would hope that would never, ever happen. But I could understand some consternation in, in pointing out our failures. We're going to have them. Um, I, I, I do believe... If, and, and I will tell you, it's natural for us to take comments from the winning coach and, and put them in a different bucket than those from the losing coach that tend to come across as sour grapes. We look at them the same. Um, but, you know, if, if you've got a winning coach that said, these officials need to do this and here's what we're seeing, we will take that and use it in our, uh, in our meeting training. And it is enormously value, valuable. We don't, as officials, especially now with our numbers, we're working a Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, a weeknight game. By the time we get past that second game, we had in our mind that, gosh, I should take a look at that to see if I actually kicked that play or got it right, and we'll lose track. And so I think the more feedback we get, I'll, I'll say this, um, and, and all of you guys are really good at get, getting film back, but it's, it's very important that we get it back quick so that we as officials can go take a look at the stuff that we think that we want to look at again. But I think then the follow-up, if you are looking at with your assistant coaches and you go, see, that's the play that we got on the coach, I would like to bring that to their attention. I think we can benefit from that because we will use it to train. We're not perfect. We got to get better all the time. And the only way we can do that is to see our failures. So, um, and I know, again, you guys are all good at that. I've seen good feedback from you. And I know it's positive when you guys send it in, um, but it's a tough balance. Um, so one of the issues that comes up sometimes is there's a player who is uh, borderline out of control on the field or, or having issues or getting a little too wound up. Uh, what, what do you think is the best approach for the officials to take with that in terms of communication and, and how to handle that situation? Um, and I'll start with you, Coach Yates. <clears throat> well, first of all, if, if the officials feel that way, I'm, I'd appreciate them letting me know. Um, if it's something that, that we've got a kid that's, that's going to cost us because of a, you know, a penalty or, or <clears throat> maybe worse is getting close to being ejected for whatever reasons, I, you know, I'd like to know that. I'd like to get him off the field and I'd like to be able to have a little, little chat with him, um, see if I can – talk some sense into him before he goes back out on the field. So for me, I, I appreciate the kind of communication about that. Coach Logan? Yeah, I think it, uh, I agree. I think it gets down to uh, communication. I think I, what I like is uh, when officials, uh, if they see something they don't like, if there's some sort of verbal stuff going on or whatever, then my idea would be talk to the player first and see if you can, you can rectify the situation that way. But I agree with Scott. If you're having any sort of further concerns, then I want to know. And, uh, you know, we, we, I will handle that. And, and I tell the officials, you know what, I got it. We'll take care of it. And then, you know, it's just not going to happen anymore. So communication, again, it gets back to that. Coach Lowry, in the old days when I started, uh, the conventional wisdom was you just the, the officials would just send the kid out of the game to say, hey, you need to go to the sideline for a play or two and calm down. And they might and they'd communicate to the coach, hey, this guy's you know needs needs to calm down a little bit. Uh, you 
think that? What do you think about that? And how do you think we should handle it? I think if you guys communicate with us and let us know what's going on first, um, I think all of us, and I know all those coaches well, that we're going to take care of our kid with it. We're not going to tolerate that. So if you let us know what's going on, most likely we're going to yank them and pull them off to the side and let them know that's that's not okay. And if they want to keep playing, then they better shut up with it. You know, we've had some kids that have come off and said, hey, you know, that, that official's, you know, he's smack talking back with me or whatever. And it's like, well, that's inappropriate. So I'd rather just say, hey, you know, this is what's happening. Let us know. And like I said, we'll we'll pull them off the field and take care of our kids with it. So um, I mean, usually apologize to the officials about having, having to deal with our knuckleheads to do that. So, um, no, he, I think just letting us know so we're not going to tolerate it. Coach Payad, anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, we've had success maybe a couple of three, seven years I've been here with the good leaders as captains. So I think if there's a way, you know, for the refs to, because, you know, on the field it is the, the captain, especially like a middle linebacker, he knows the, the emotions going on. So if they maybe went to him and say, hey, you know, your nose tackle is, he's doing some stuff dirty. You know, I'd like to see, have my, my captains have a shot at trying to, to lead, you know. But if that, you know, I know that's asking a lot on the refs, but it's kind of why they're out there. They know the, the flow of the game better than coaches at times. So, but at the end of the day, if they, they escalate, I'd love to have uh, the ref talk to me before my kid gets penalized. Um, so I want to throw it open to you guys to, to uh, inform us. Um, is there one thing that you really want all officials to keep in mind about the game as they officiate, as we go about our business? Is there something that you think should sort of be, uh, what, what one thing would you want to be in the back of our mind uh, during the time that we're officiating the game? Okay. And Coach Lowry, let's start with you. Um, I think I brought this up a little bit earlier. I, and it's a great question. Thanks for asking. I think it's one of those that um, there's a saying, you know, it, it, some people may say it's just high school football, but, you know, big time is wherever you're at at the point. So, you know, for high school football, our games are as big as they get for us. I, they're bigger than the NFL or whatever for us in that moment. I think how much time and effort and uh, sweat and tears and all that that goes into creating a team and, and going into a season. I mean, we've all been training since – since January, and we're going to be working all summer, you know, typically, hopefully this summer. But there's a lot that goes into it. So, um, and I, you guys are spending all your time right now, three days a week, on, on getting better as officials. I think we're all taking it real serious. And um, Friday nights or Thursday nights, we all have to understand that everybody's working really, really hard to be successful. And a lot of time and effort goes into it. So um, be respectful. And, and I know sometimes there might be a coach or – and there might be an official that are just under each other's skin, but the bottom line is we have to take care of the kids, and, and it's a long season, and, um, you know, it comes down to every week is a huge week for us. So uh, it's important for us. It's important for all of us. Coach Payette? Yeah, I think for me it's just, you know, not impacting the game in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that didn't have to be impacted. So, you know, just being consistent with calls throughout the whole game for me is the biggest thing I, I, I hope for the refs to do. I can – I can tolerate if we're getting holding, holding penalties and the other team's getting it. Um, but what I what I, I fear the most is when, you know, maybe the game's no one's getting held or no one's getting called. And then on a fourth down in the red zone or something, you have a critical play and they finally throw a flag that hasn't been thrown all game. So for me, it's just being consistent. Because um, as a coach, I can kind of coach around that too. Like, hey, they're going to be throwing a lot of flags on PI, so let's not probably press it today. Um, so for me, I can, I can get around being consistent. But when there's inconsistency in calls, um, you know, and I know refs, you know, they're going to miss some calls, but when it's blatant consistency the wrong way uh, or inconsistency, that's what I get most fearful of. Coach Yates? Um, you know, I guess I guess I just <clears> – <throat> I think consistency is a big thing, and I think that, um, like I said at the very beginning of this, the way officials carry themselves really lets coaches know right away whether they're, they're there for the – love of the game and for the kids and, and uh, for the event um, as opposed to if they're there for some other reason, maybe, you know, maybe they've had a bad day or whatever and they uh, um, tend to, you know, don't show up with their A game. So my hope is that they always want to come show up with their A game, just like we're hoping our kids will show up and our coaches will show up. So that's, that's kind of it for me. Okay. Coach Logan. Yeah, I think I think all three guys have made points that I agree with. I think that um, I think from a coach's standpoint, what you want from officials is you want consistency, you want good communication. Uh, it's okay if you miss a call because obviously we all miss calls. Um, 
but I think you, you want to know that that officiating crew, um, that that's tonight's game is really important. It's really important. And it doesn't, it, it's, it's big for those kids. It's big for the coaches. I can tell you, um, I mean, you know, the guys have coached a long time, but every single time you go on the field, man, it's, um, it's, it's important. And we as coaches just want to know that, that the officials feel the same way. Like fellas, we're here for the same reason. We're here to, for these kids and to grow the game of football, which we all love. But we take this, you know, we want to know that it's taken seriously and you guys are really into the game. And I will say, from, again, for the most part, because most of the veteran officials I know, I know pretty well, I, I think that happens. I always like to, to see games with veteran guys because I know they've, they've been through it and I know they care about it. How are we doing on time, Kirk? That's, uh, that's 8.30 and we try to stay on time, start and finish on time. So I think we better wrap it up. Okay. Hey, uh, to each of the coaches, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, we, we all really appreciate it a lot. It makes us a better association. So thank you. You bet. Hey, John. I think, John, are you still here? Yeah. I was just going to say, I think I, for all of us with it and all the coaches that, you know, we appreciate what you guys do so much. Um, it's a hard profession and, and that's yep. why there's a shortage of officials is that no one wants to go out on a Friday night and go get yelled at and barked at by coaches and fans and, you know, all that. So um, I think we all need to let you guys know how much we appreciate you guys. Um, it's impressive how much time you guys are putting in the off season right now to, to try to prepare to get better. A lot of these guys have buddies that they could probably get out to be officials. And I think we need that. So to help out with our lower level programs, to be able to play on consistent days and, and to not put so much pressure and stress on, on the, the, the few officials that we have. So, um, and then there's some coaches out there and sometimes, unfortunately, maybe it's, it's me or my staff that, that uh, rub you guys wrong or whatever. And, um, you know, we all have weaknesses at time, but we just appreciate you guys. And, and we want to try to work on, on becoming better coaches and better officials and making this experience great for the kids. So um, we just want to say thank you guys. Yeah. I, I also want to say one thing, John, real quick. Sure. If there's anything we can do, I think, again, all, I know all these guys here pretty well. If there's anything we can do to assist you guys in, uh, you know, I, 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 we started, I, I don't even remember if they were recording, if you guys were recording this or not, but we talked about, you know, finding officials. It's hard to find officials. It's hard to find coaches, you know, guys that want to dedicate that much time. So to me, even though we bark at each other during the course of a game, we're, we're sort of in the same family. We might even you know, be like distant cousins, you know, but it's about football and the kids. So any way that we can help grow the official base whether it's PSA announcements, and I'm, I'm being serious about that. I mean, I think all of us would be more than happy to, to do whatever we could do. Well, we appreciate that. You're prescient because we are going to do PSA announcements um, beginning in the fall um, oh, as wow. part of the introduction of the officials at the game. Um, so we appreciate that. I do think it is collaboration because we are both in the same boat uh, in a lot of ways, and uh, we both want the same thing. I think uh, you know, we can we can talk further. Hopefully, this is the start of communication and discussion about it. Uh, to you know, come up with ideas. Um, you know, how can we plant the seed in today's football players that down the road, when they're settled somewhere and they want to be part of the game again, that officiating is one way to do that, or coaching is one way to do that. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, we'll we'll keep working on it for sure. Um, so we appreciate the feedback. It, it's good for the officials to hear too. You know, I wanted to say that I appreciate you guys even thinking to do this. Um, you know, I, I kind of got asked to do this at the last minute, but um, I'm thankful that I was included. And I think that it shows a lot for all you officials um, to talk about how much everybody cares about the game. It's obvious that you guys would take your time to, to look deeper into what it, what it takes for us all to do better. So thank you. Yeah, you're, and we're thrilled you were part of this, and uh, uh, Kirk deserves a lot of credit for, for putting this together, so thanks to Kirk. Thank you guys. You're awesome. Uh, we'll get going. Maybe we can do it again uh, again next year or another opportunity to do so. So have a good night. Stay healthy and safe. God bless you guys. Okay, God bless you, too. All right, take care. Brad, talk to you. Bye, guys. All right, Coach, see you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. See you guys.